Peters. How are you doing? There is a song that says, 23 says, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I, because, you know, in Hebrew it says, even though I go through it, even though I go through it, and Psalm 23 begins with uh, green pastures and everything beautiful and still waters. Oh, yes, the microphone. Thank you again. This, still waters and beautiful pastures. And then suddenly in the middle, we have a valley of shadow of death. Have you noticed that? But at the end of the psalm, we have the house of the Father. So he begins in, with green pastures and beautiful waters, and he goes through the dark valley, and he makes it to the, to, the, to the house of the Father. So he is not going to stop in the valley. He's just going through the valley. And whatever you are going through, that's what you're doing. You are going through that thing. It's not your final destination. You are going to make it to the other side. Therefore, keep walking in the name of the Lord. So today we are going to study that briefly. Um, keep walking. Yesterday we took a look at the plagues and we could talk about one plague for the whole week because it's an amazing world that, that there is there. Um, but we are making a summary and um, uh, sharing a few thoughts about it and also to incorporate it in our prayers. And today we're going to talk about keep walking. We remember that uh, about Pharaoh, we learned several things, and one of them was that a Pharaoh was a person that didn't want to, was unable to, and didn't simply refuse to let go, and that it's time for us to let go of some things. And we have seen several examples in the Bible of people that do not want to let go of things that are killing them, like Samuel. For example, someone went to the Lord and cried over Saul and said, but why? Please don't move him. Don't move him. And a few verses before said that Saul was looking for Samuel to kill him. So here you have somebody crying for somebody that wants to kill him. And uh, we are just like probably like Prophet Samuel. There are some things that we learned yesterday that we need to ask the Lord to give us the strength to let go. Whatever they are, even family members that for, whose, for whose cause your blood pressure is higher than before. You know, you have only one brain and one heart and you need to take care of it. And we are not talking about hating them or kicking them or beating them or insulting them. We are just talking about asking God to give us the strength to say, Lord, this is killing me. I cannot deal with this, but I know you can. Therefore, it is in your hands. Amen? Amen? We learned yesterday that when we do not let go, we suffer. And we also learned that some of us are waiting for mangoes when we have in front of us a coconut tree. And that it's time to understand and to accept that maybe you have a coconut tree in front of you. Amen? And don't hate the coconut tree. Coconuts are good. You know, I like lions. I love lions. They are majestic. They are this, and they do this with the hair. I like them, but only I like them in, in DVDs and through TV. That, <laughs> you know, yes. And there are people that are like lions. You know, you, can, you go to heaven, no problem, but you're not going to make me get there earlier, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. So, yes. But today we're going to talk about keep walking and... Um, the people of Israel left Egypt. Finally, the Bible says that <clears throat> when Pharaoh finally let the people go, God didn't let them along the main road. Listen to this. God didn't let them among, uh, sorry, along the main road that runs through Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest route. And this is a little review from last, uh, not from last year, from the year before, in other words, when, when God took them out, he didn't take them through the shortest route, <clears throat> the Bible says here, to the promised land. Because he said, if they are faced with battle, they might change their mind and go back to Egypt. So he didn't take them through the territory of the Philistines. 
Did I say Philistines or Philistines? How do you say? Phil Philist Philistines. Both of them. All of them. This thing is being recorded. And I, hi, mama. <laughs> Philistines. So should I say Philistines? Yes. Don't mock me then later. Say like, <laughs> he said Philistines. <laughs> you know. So let us see, let us see the verse. This is what happened. This is the land of Goshen where they were in Egypt. This green part here, this one here, yeah? So the land of the Philistine is this valley right here that you see. You see it? You see it? That triangle, that's the, 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 the land here. And they were right here. So the promised land, you know where the promised land is? It's right here. <laughs> Can you believe something like that? So he, the Bible says there, when he finally let them go, God didn't take them through the land of the Philistines, the desert of the Philistines, of the Philistines, right here, even though that was the shortest route. So what did he do? I will, uh, this is another picture. You're straight forward here, right here, and the land is right here. That was easy. 1.8 million people probably, they would have made it, fast but instead how did God let them what did he do well the Bible says that God led them in a runabout way through the wilderness towards the Red Sea in other words he did this instead of going straight here he went all the way down here to Sukkot and then all the way down here to Migdol and then up to Ethan. That doesn't make sense to me. And I'm sure that didn't make sense to, jo to, to Moses either that knew the land. If we can make it that fast here, why do we have to go all the way down here? So, this is a little bit bigger, so for you to see it, this is, they come from Goshen here, or Goshen, and they stop in Sukkot, as the verse says, and keep going all the way down to Migdol and then up to Etham. That's what is happening. So listen, listen, listen what it says here. Then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses, and he ordered the Israelites to turn back and come by Pihahiroth between Migdol and the sea. So even more confusing, because first of all, he said, I can go straight like this. And instead of going straight like that, we are going to go all the way down. We will stop in Sukkot. And then after that, we will go down all the way to Migdol and then to Ethan. That doesn't make any sense because we are going all the way there. But it makes it even worse because now it says that they have to go be, and stay between Migdol and the sea. And this is what it looks like. This is the verse right here. This is the place where they are. They will go through this little um, uh, entrance, this road here, full of mountains here. And um, this is the place. This is Migdol, the ruins of Migdol. And this is the sea. And the Bible says, take them and camp between Migdol and the sea, uh, uh, and the sea in front of Bayer Sephon. Now, Bayer Sephon is right here. So this is the verse in pictures that we are looking at right here. So they are between Migdol and they are between the sea and in front of Baal Sephon right here. So in other words, they entered this way. This is where they entered. This is Migdol here and this is the sea. And here, this is where they camp. If you cross the sea, then you will have Baal Sephon. Moses understood because he grew up in Egypt. He was the prince of Egypt. And it's very interesting that all these Egyptian names are used in the book of Exodus. He knew the root. And I'm sure that when Moses was walking with the Lord and the Lord gave him those instructions, Moses in his mind thought, this doesn't make too much sense to me. Every time I go to that land, to Canaan, I go straight right here. Remember, when Mary and Joseph went with the baby to Egypt, they didn't go through the Red Sea. 
Remember, when the sons of Jacob went to Egypt to look for food, they didn't take that route. They went straight by the land of the Philistines. But now, God is taking this detour all over the place that makes no sense. But what is happening is that although Moses knows Egyptian geography, he thinks and he says and he believes God knows better and I am going to follow him. And it doesn't make sense to me. And I may say maybe the Lord is confused. Uh, or probably he doesn't know well the road. Moses knew it. And he, if I would have been Moses, probably I would have said, excuse me, Lord. Yes, in the cloud. Hello. <laughs> we are down here a little bit confused because usually we don't do that. We go straight. But Moses, although he knew geography and he knew his land, he was humble enough to follow the Lord even though he didn't understand what the Lord was saying or doing. Confusing orders that make no sense. And everybody was confused, but they were following the cloud. It's my, my prayer that you follow the cloud this morning too. Wherever it leads, I will follow, says the, Bible, the, the, the song. So the Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they were camped beside the shore near Pihahiroth across Val Sephon, which is here. This is the entrance from this side. What we saw is where they were, but this is where the Israelites were, all the way there. And here, by the, because of the clouds, you cannot see it, but this is Val Sephon right there. And they are camped here. And this is the entrance that Pharaoh is taking. That is why Pharaoh said they are trumped. They are blocked. They, 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 we, we, we have them. And this is the entrance now. And what is happening is that the, the, the Bible says he caught them. He, he, he finally get them. And they were in prison, cornered. They have no way out. Isn't it funny how sometimes... The Lord will lead you to places where it looks like he actually took you there to destroy you. And you ask the Lord, why are you doing this to me? This is painful and is uncomfortable. And you are putting me in a position where I cannot run. Have you ever been in that place where if you sit, it's bad, and if you stand, it's bad. If you talk, it's bad, and if you silent, it's bad. If you are there, it's bad, and if you are not there, it's bad. However you do it, it's, it's bad anyway. So here they are. If they go to the left, it's sea. If they go to the right, it's mountains. If they go to the right, it's sea. They have nowhere. It's bad anyway. And who took them there? God took, took them there. God took them to, a, to an uncomfortable position, put them in a very distressful uh, um, or a stressful situation, led them to a place that looked like actually he was working together with Pharaoh to kill them all. <laughs> Have you ever prayed, Father in heaven, why are you trying to kill me? <laughs> well, if you are in planet Earth, probably you have prayed, and you have said, I don't know what you are doing. Moses didn't know what he was doing. And when he got there, it, it made less sense because it looked like he actually gave them up. But he kept following the cloud, even though he didn't understand. And things were getting even worse and uglier. And so the Bible says that they were a double cry. When they got there, the Bible says they looked back. They saw the horses. And some say they cry out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, look at this verse. It says, and Pharaoh approached the people of Israel, look, and they panicked. And when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them, they cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, why did you bring us here to die? There are two groups crying here. One group is crying out to the Lord, and the other one is crying out to Moses. But everybody's crying. <laughs> when you see yourself there, you will cry. Even Jesus himself cried. Why have you forsaken me? I thought we were in this together. You let me here, and now I don't see you, and I don't feel you. Have you been there 
where everything is dark. We have two, two groups here. One cries to the Lord and the other one cries to Moses and said, you know what? There were enough pyramids that we built there. You should have let us die over there. But the cries are mixed and both of them go together to heaven. And so here you have what is humanity. When we are in trouble, we will cry out. Some of us cry to God. Some of us cry to the pastor. Some of us cry to our friends. Some of us cry to ourselves. Some of us cry to everybody. You get nervous and you get hysterical. It's a human reaction. You see danger and you get nervous and you get irritating. That's what is happening right here. They see the end. We are blocked. We are in prison and we are going to die. And so, sarcastically, but also in many pains, he said, you know what? There were a lot, a lot of gra graves and cemeteries there. But others cried to the Lord. I like this verse because it's sincere and it tells the truth about humanity. Even the strongest men and women of God have cried either to Moses or to God. The important thing is that God hears anyway. And then the Bible says... Moses told them, Moses didn't know what was going to happen because Moses had never seen a Red Sea opening before him. So some of us think, ah, oh, Moses knew what was going to happen and he has the rod and he was just, oh, don't worry about it. Did, he didn't know. He was trusting Jehovah. It was dark. He didn't know how we're going to get out of this one. But I know that if he brought me this far, he's going to get me out too. That was all. And Moses told the people, don't be afraid, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. Look at what, he doesn't say what is going to happen. <laughs> he just trusts that God is going to do something. It's like when you are in that situation and you look at it and you could look, look, like, look at demons and devils and dragons and snakes at the eye. You, you look at that problem, at that diagnosis, at that situation at home or in church or school or personal, and you say, I don't know what is going to happen, but I know we are going to get to the other side. Somehow, God is going to come across. So please, be calm. That's what he's saying there. And he says, the Lord is going to rescue us, but he himself doesn't know what is going to happen. And then he adds, the Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Amen. And that is another great lesson there because he's saying the Egyptians that you are seeing today, you will never see them again. Let me tell you, begin for the, by, by the end. Just stay calm. He will fight for you. We need to learn that we cannot fight all the fights. If you fight everything, you will, you are not a cat, right? You know cats, uh, meow, meow, cats, <laughs> yes, no, you know, maybe I, they have, how many lives do they have? Nine, Nine they have here. In my country, they have seven, it's, uh, probably it's because of the socioeconomic situation, <laughs> but we are going to march for the equality of all cats. All cats deserve nine lives, and we're going to protest to the government back home because of that. <laughs> it was 3 o'clock in the morning. I came from the church. I sat down, and I looked at my hand. It was a very difficult church board, not because the people were difficult, but because the situation was, and it was distressful. I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't existing, and I looked at my hand at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I realized one thing. I was not a cat. I said, I'm not a cat. I'm a human being. And that means one thing. I have one life only. One. And very short. And God wants you to live it in abundance. God doesn't want you to exploit, deploy, or explode your brain. You have one life, and you need to be careful when you choose your fight. If you are fighting everything, and Sister Mary, and Auntie Shiniqua, and Brother James, and you're fighting everybody, you're going to die. That's what will happen. There are some things and some people that you need to let go. And you need to recognize this is not a fight that I will fight. I will go and pray for you. 
from the safety of my room. Somebody called me once, 3 o'clock in the morning, saying, Pastor, run. I said, where? Run. Come to my house. My husband is chasing me with a hammer. I said, with a hammer? Go where? No. No. I'm going to my room. I'm going to double lock it now. And I'm going to pray from the safety of my room, from the other side of the bed, next to the window, <laughs> while you call nine something something. I will not say the number, so then you don't know where it was. Next Sabbath, she came and said, Pastor, I'm looking for a sign that the Lord will tell me what to do about this situation. I told her, Sister, that hammer is a divine sign. Sent from above, you know, with angels. Have you seen these little angels? They are, they are, they have a little belly and curly hair, and they are tiny and, and like with little harps and coming, like that. That was a sign sent from above from the Lord with music. Oh, you live in you, yeah. He says, no, 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 no. God will fight this one. God will fight this one for you. You don't fight all the things. Somebody told me, 6'4", 250 pounds. I have shared with, this with you in another occasion. Um, this person came uh, to the church bleeding on Sabbath and his, with one tooth left every week. So I was saying, what is going on? His wife was beating him. <laughs> and he has here something said, made in China. He says here, and I said, what is going on? She used to hit him with the walk, you know, and the walk was made in China. So he, he had the mark of the walk. He had beaten him, and every Sabbath, a toothless was there. And he asked me, I don't know what to do. And I say, well, I see a toothless every week, and I think I know what to do. We have two options here. Number one, we look for professional help. It's not, it's not. It's not shame in looking for a professional help. You know that? If you, God forbid, break your leg, I'm sure that you're going to pray, but you're going to call the, the ambulance too. So let me tell you that you have an emotional skeleton, and you have a heart that can be broken, and that you might need also professional help to put it back in track. And since we are children, we are broken. We come from broken homes and going from trauma to trauma without being treated, and that is why we are like we are sometimes. Well, it's time to let go and say, I need help. Amen? Amen. This man told me that. I said, well, we have two options. You can, you can keep losing your tooth, you know, your, your teeth, right? Your teeth. You can keep losing your teeth and stay there until one day something happens. Or you can give me your favorite hymn, your favorite Bible uh, scripture, your favorite color, and I will prepare the program for your funeral. And uh, the... <laughs> The woman was 5'2", and he was 6'4", so they have a covenant to a, maybe a ladder to slap him. The point is that there are things that you need to live in God's hands that are not your fight. You have one life. We talk about a lot about Christ going to the cross, but uh, about Christ going to the cross, but Christ spent 33 years running away from the cross. And whenever he was going to be killed, or beaten or mistreated, the Bible says that he ran away from there because it wasn't his time yet. Let me tell you that he was already sacrificed for you to have life. You need your brain. And the other thing is that it says there, it says, these Egyptians that you see today, you will never see them again forever. That was very emphatic because you will never see them again forever. Like it wasn't enough to say you will never see them again. And what would we have there is that there are some things that we are meant to go through only once. Now, if you keep going through the same thing over and over and over again, it's time that you take a look at yourself. Because something is wrong. I mean, people fight in this church, and then they look for another church because this church is horrible, and they go to this church. And in that church, they start fighting too. So they leave that church and go to that church. And they start fighting over there too, and they leave that church and go. And the whole time, I arrived to a church when I was in Jupiter. I was a pastor in Jupiter. 
And there was somebody who came and told me, let me tell you one thing. I had a fight with the previous pastor, with the previous, previous pastor, with the pastor before, and with everybody. And I don't doubt that I will fight with you too. And I said, don't you think probably that you have a problem? I will tell you one thing that they discovered last week. Only I know this, and I will share it with you. It was in a journal, a scientific journal from the University of Oxford. And the journal says, um, this is very, very important because probably you don't know it. Only I know this part. And it says like this, people have issues in their heads. Do you know that? There are some things that you are meant to go only once. Christ was crucified how many times? Only once. I have to close now. We didn't even touch. The, the, when he resurrected, the Bible says that he took the, um, the, um, the sheet and he folded it nicely. Do you remember that part? And put it at the head. Do you know what that meant? When somebody went to a place and was invited to eat or was invited to stay, if the person folded the sheet that like that, the sheet like that, and, fold, and put it nicely, that meant that that person will never ever go back to that place. Amen. That's what it meant. And so he, and of course, to all my beloved things that are around, that also means that we have to make our beds before, before going to school, yeah? But in reality, what it means is that he folded saying, I was mistreated here, I wasn't welcome here. I'm not coming back. So here it is. And some of us need to do exactly that. Go through one thing only once. So this is my advice and prayer. We have to check ourselves and see if we are repeating the same story over and over and over again and again and again. Something is wrong with us because whoever gets close to Christ will change. It is impossible to get close to Christ and remain the same person, gossiping and backbiting and creating division and destroying homes. It is impossible. There are some things that we are supposed to go only once. They kept walking. We have to close right here. Uh, the Lord said to Moses, why you cry out to me? Tell the people to keep walking. And we're going to leave it here. Walk where? Where? Where are we going to walk? We have Egyptians behind, sharks in front, a mountain next to tell them to keep walking. And when they step on it, the sea opens. We will have to continue tomorrow. But I will leave you with this one. Keep walking. As we walk, we get healed. The ten lepers, the Bible says, they got healed as they walk to Jerusalem. Abraham found the ram as he walked towards the mountain. The Jordan opened when the priest walked. And if you take a look in the Bible, you will see that people get healed and miracles take place when they keep walking. Whatever is happening in your life, it is my prayer. It is my prayer that you keep walking in the name of the Lord. However close that sea may look, I pray that you keep walking. Do not give up in the name of the Lord. Do not give up. Keep on walking. Abraham Lincoln said, I, keep, I walk slowly but forward. So it is my prayer that you do too. That you keep moving forward in the name of Jesus. Even if you don't see a way out, if he says keep walking, let us keep walking in the name of the Lord. It is my prayer that even though it looks dark and no way out, we are going to get to the other side because he says so. He said that we will make it to the other side and we will make it to the other side. So keep walking in the name of the Lord. As we walk, we will get healed. As we walk, the sea will open. As we walk, we will be restored. Keep walking. If you feel discouraged, sometimes personally, sometimes I walk, sometimes I crawl, other times I run. However it is, you keep walking. When you can walk, walk. When you can crawl, crawl. And if you can even crawl, you sit down there, cry and wait a little bit until you get some strength and keep walking in the name of Jesus. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.